subscribe to the channel and also press the bell icon to never miss an update from Endeavor Careers. Hello and welcome to Endeavor's GK Capsule for the month of August 2021. The international news this month was dominated by the US departure and Taliban gaining control in Afghanistan. The Tokyo Olympic Games were also concluded successfully this month, with India winning seven medals. Let's look at these and other highlights of the month. The first category is Awards and Recognitions. This month, both the news in this category are related to former Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi. On 7th August, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the renaming of the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna Award after the legendary hockey player Major Dhyan Chand. In a series of tweets, Prime Minister Modi wrote that the exceptional performance of the men's and women's hockey team in Tokyo Olympics has captured the imagination of the entire nation and renewed interest towards hockey across the length and breadth of India. He further wrote that he had been getting many requests from citizens across India to name the Khel Ratna Award after Major Dhyan Chand. It is fitting that India's highest sporting honour will be named after him. The Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna Award, which will now be referred to as the Major Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award, is the highest sports prize of India. The prize carries a cash reward of Rs 25 lakhs. It recognises sportspersons who have excelled at the international level over a period of four years. Just days after the central government changed the name of the Rajiv Gandhi Khel Ratna Award to Major Dhyan Chand Khel Ratna Award, the Maharashtra government has announced a new award named after Rajiv Gandhi. The Rajiv Gandhi IT Excellence Award will be given to institutions and companies for outstanding performance in the information technology sector. The award will be announced every year on 20 August, which is the birth anniversary of Rajiv Gandhi. However, this year's award will be presented in October. The Maharashtra government is talking to various organizations like NASCOM to finalize the modalities of the award. The next category is Persons in News. Radha Kishan Damani, the owner of India's leading retail chain D-Mart, has entered the list of world's 100 richest people as per the latest rankings on the Bloomberg Billionaires Index. Damani controls Avenue Supermarts, a Mumbai-based retailer specializing in low-priced consumer goods. It sells food, clothing and other consumer products in more than 200 D-Mart shops across India. At the moment, Damani is placed 97th on the list with a net worth of $19.3 billion. According to the Bloomberg Billionaires Index, his wealth has increased by $4.41 billion this year. The sharp jump in Damani's net worth is a result of gains in the stock price of Avenue Supermarkets. The stock has gained 32% this year so far. Damani was raised in a Marwari family in Mumbai. He set up his hypermarket chain D-Mart in 2002. While R.K. Damani devotes most of his time to D-Mart, he is also an avid investor in stock markets. In 2020, Damani became the fourth richest Indian with a net worth of $16.5 billion. Apart from Radha Krishan Damani, other Indians in the Bloomberg's 100 richest individuals list are Mukesh Ambani, Gautam Adani, Azim Premji, Palonji Mistri, Shiv Nadar and Lakshmi Mittal. Former Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh, Kalyan Singh passed away at the age of 89 years. He was admitted to hospital on July 4th due to an infection. Kalyan Singh became the Chief Minister of UP twice, first time in 1991, but resigned following the demolition of the Babri Masjid in Ayodhya on 6th December 1992. He became the Chief Minister for a second term in 1997. Uttar Pradesh government declared a three-day mourning in the state to condole the death of Kalyan Singh. Maki Kaji, a puzzle enthusiast and publisher who was known as the godfather of Sudoku, died at the age of 69. A university dropout, Kaji founded Japan's first puzzle magazine. He created Sudoku sometime in mid-1980s. Sudoku became popular outside Japan after overseas newspapers began printing it. More than 100 million people around the world try Sudoku regularly as an exercise to keep mental faculties sharp. 
a Sudoku World Championship is also hosted annually since 2006. Maki Kaji created and refined puzzles for his quarterly puzzle magazine. He stepped down as the head of his company in July due to ill health and died on 10th August. The next category is Places in News. Indore has been declared as world's first water plus city under the Swachh Sarvekshan 2021. A water plus city certificate is provided to a city for maintaining cleanliness in rivers and drains under its administration. Under Swachh Sarvekshan, a city is declared as water plus only after all wastewater released from households and commercial activities is treated before releasing the treated wastewater to the environment. Swachh Sarvekshan is an annual survey of cleanliness, hygiene and sanitation in cities and towns across India launched as a part of the Swachh Bharat mission. It is important to note here that Indore is also declared the cleanest city of India under the Swachh Sarvekshan 2021. Four more sites from India have been recognized under the Ramsar Convention on Wetlands. With the latest addition, the total number of Indian sites in the Ramsar list have increased to 46. The Ramsar Convention on Wetlands is an international agreement adopted in 1971. Under the agreement, those wetlands which are of international importance are declared as Ramsar sites for their conservation. The four new Indian sites added to the list this year are Sultanpur National Park, Pindavas Wildlife Sanctuary in Haryana, Thor Lake and Vadwana Wetland in Gujarat. Bhubaneswar, the capital of Odisha, has become the first city in India to achieve 100% vaccination coverage against COVID-19. 100% of the population in Bhubaneswar has been vaccinated against COVID-19. Along with this, 1 lakh migrant workers in the city have also been administered the first dose of the vaccine. To accelerate the drive, 55 vaccination centres were set up across Bhubaneswar, including 10 drive through vaccination faculties. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal inaugurated India's first-ever smog tower at Kanot Place on 23rd August. A smog tower works as a large-scale air purifier in order to reduce air pollution particles. It is essential for Delhi, which is one of the most polluted cities of the world and has seen a major fall in its air quality over the past few years. Smog Tower is 24 meters high. It was built at a cost of 20 crore rupees. The tower will purify 1000 cubic meters of air per second within a radius of 1 kilometer. The Border Road Organization inaugurated world's highest motorable road in Ladakh. The road passes over Umlingla mountain pass. The road reaches its highest altitude of 19,300 feet above sea level. This is higher than Khardungla, which is at an altitude of 17,582 feet. The 52 km new road now connects important regions and towns in the Chumar sector of eastern Ladakh. Let us now look at major highlights in the category of national news. Prime Minister Narendra Modi unfurled the national flag from the ramparts of the Red Fort to celebrate Independence Day 2021. It was followed by a series of events organized by the armed forces and security personnel saluting the tricolor with a guard of honor. On the special occasion of Independence Day, Prime Minister invited athletes who participated in the Olympics. A separate block has been created on the south side of the Red Fort's ramparts for Corona warriors such as health workers to honour them for playing a vital role in fighting the pandemic. Addressing the nation from the Red Fort, PM Modi said the centre will soon launch Rs 100 lakh crore Gati Shakti National Infrastructure Plan to boost the country's economy. Prime Minister also announced 75 Vande Bharat trains connecting different parts of the country in 75 weeks of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. In his address to the nation, Prime Minister Modi also gave a call of Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, Sabka Vishwas and Sabka Prayas for building a new India. Nine new judges, including three women, were appointed to the Supreme Court of India on 26th August. The Supreme Court Collegium had recommended nine names to the centre government. 
President Ramnath Govind signed their appointment letters after the central government cleared all the nine names. The Supreme Court has a sanctioned strength of 34 judges. Only one vacancy is left in the Supreme Court after the new judges were sworn in. The new judges appointed are Karnataka High Court Chief Justice A.S. Oka, Gujarat High Court Chief Justice Vikram Nath, Sikkim Chief Justice J.K. Maheshwari, Telangana Chief Justice Hima Kohli, Justice B.V. Nagarathna of the Karnataka High Court, Kerala High Court Judge Justice C.T. Ravikumar, Madras High Court Judge Justice M.M. Sundaresh, Gujarat High Court Judge Justice Bela M. Trivedi and Senior Advocate P.S. Narasimha. Justice B. V. Nagaratna, one of the women judges recommended, is in line to become the first Chief Justice of India in 2027. In an interim order passed on 18th August, the Supreme Court of India has allowed women to take the National Defence Academy exam. The NDA exam is scheduled on 5th September. The court also slammed the government and Indian Army for gender discrimination. The plea was filed by advocate Kush Kalra on the grounds that denial of opportunity to women candidates to enroll at the NDA is a violation of Articles 14, 15, 16 and 19 of the Constitution. A bench of Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Justice Rishikesh Roy ordered that female candidates can sit for the NDA exam on 5th September, but the admissions will be subject to the outcome of the petition. 127th Constitutional Amendment Bill was passed by the Parliament during the monsoon session. The bill was passed by the Lok Sabha on 10th August and by the Rajya Sabha on 11th August. The opposition, which has been disrupting proceedings of both the houses for more than three weeks over Pegasus snooping scandal, also supported the bill. President Ramnath Kovin granted his assent to the bill as 105th Constitutional Amendment Act 2021 on 20th August. The Amendment Act bypasses a judgment of the Supreme Court in May that took away the state government's power to notify other backward classes in their respective states. It allows the states to prepare their own list of other backward classes. The bill has political ramifications as restoring powers of the states to identify backward classes has been a demand by many regional parties. The parties want to get support among the OBC communities in the poll-bound states, especially in the politically crucial Uttar Pradesh. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the National Vehicle Scrappage Policy on 13th August. According to the new policy, a certificate will be issued on the scrappage of old cars, which will ensure the former owners get a discount on the purchase of new cars and benefit fees. The aim is to develop a sustainable and environment-friendly economy. The voluntary vehicle scrapping policy announced in the Union Budget for 2021-22 provides for fitness tests after 20 years for personal vehicles, while commercial vehicles would require it after the completion of 15 years. The said vehicles will be required to undergo mandatory fitness and pollution tests in automated facilities, which will be introduced in a phased manner in the coming weeks. These automated fitness tests will be set up under public-private partnership mode, while the government will assist private partners and state governments for scrapping centres. Driving such vehicles that fail to pass automated tests will attract huge penalties and also be impounded. The vehicle scrappage policy will bring in investments of around 10,000 crore rupees in the country, which will help phase out unfit and polluting vehicles in an environment-friendly manner. The Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways has introduced a new BH series or Bharat series number plate for vehicles. As per the current laws in India, people who move from state to state are also required to change the registration of their vehicles. This new BH series of vehicle registrations will help remove the need to change the registration when the owner moves from one Indian state to another. The format of the registration number and on the plate would feature the year of registration, the BH code followed by an alphanumeric suffix with a series of four numbers and two letters. So, for a vehicle registered in 2021, it would read as 21BH0000AA. 
The new system will start from 15th September 2021. Currently, the facility is only available for defense personnel, central and state government officials, and select private sector companies who have locations in four or more states. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the second phase of Ujwala Yojana for the poor on 10th August. The Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana was originally launched in 2016 as a scheme for providing free LPG connections to 5 crore women of BPL families. The objective of the scheme was to make clean cooking fuel, such as LPG, available to the rural households. The second phase of Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana was launched on 10th August from Balia in Uttar Pradesh. Ujwala 2 will also provide first refill and hot plate free of cost to the beneficiaries. Under the scheme, migrant workers would not have to struggle to get address proof documents. The migrant workers would only be required to submit a self-declaration of their residential address to get the gas connection. The Union Labour and Employment Ministry launched eShram portal to register 38 crore unorganised workers in the country. Workers would have to register with their Aadhaar numbers on the eShram portal to generate an eShram card with universal account numbers. It is with these numbers that they would be able to access social security schemes. All workers who register on eshram.gov.in will get an insurance cover of Rs 2 lakh for death or permanent disability and 1 lakh rupees for partial disability. Tamil Nadu became the third state in the country to present a separate budget for agriculture on 14th August. The tradition of having an exclusive budget for agriculture was started by Karnataka in 2011-12. Andhra Pradesh followed in 2013-14. Tamil Nadu government believes that the move will be helpful in addressing local issues like water management, farming techniques, post-harvest management, giving additional focus to the agriculture sector. Tamil Nadu has set an ambitious target of achieving 12.5 million metric tons of food grain production during the current year. Let us now look at major highlights in the category of international use. The 20-year-long American involvement in Afghanistan finally came to an end with the last U.S. military planes leaving Afghanistan. The final U.S. withdrawal came one minute before the August 31st deadline set by President Biden. For President Biden, the end of U.S. involvement in Afghanistan was a main campaign promise. Right before the final exit, the US lost another set of soldiers to a deadly suicide bomb attack at the Kabul airport by ISIS on 26th August. Thirteen American soldiers and more than 200 Afghan civilians lost their lives in the bomb attack. Gunfire erupted in Kabul after the last US aircraft departed the city's airport as Taliban fighters fired into the air to celebrate the moment of victory. The U.S. withdrawal marks the end of two decades-long military operation, which costed it nearly $2 trillion in spending and nearly 2,000 U.S. troops killed in action. U.S. invaded Afghanistan to avenge the terror attacks of 9-11 in 2001 and to strike at Al-Qaeda and the Taliban, which hosted Osama bin Laden. But Biden administration is leaving the country in the control of Taliban militants who still maintain close ties to Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations. Mullah Hibatullah Akhundzada was declared as the supreme leader of Taliban in Afghanistan. Hibatullah Akhundzada is the titular head with the Taliban co-founder Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar heading the day-to-day -day affairs of the Taliban government in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, India held its first formal diplomatic meeting with Taliban on 1st September in Doha. Indian Ambassador to Qatar, Deepak Mittal, met with the Taliban representative to discuss the future of India-Afghanistan relationship under the new government. India did not have diplomatic relations with the Taliban when they were in power in the 1990s. Six months after the Myanmar military snatched power from the country's civilian government, the military has announced to extend its rule for two years. The announcement was made on 1st August and the new elections in Myanmar would be held in August 2023. 
The military has removed the elected leader of the country, Aung San Suu Kyi, in February this year. She has been detained by the military since 1st February on the charges of election fraud. Senior Military General Min Aung Laing has been appointed as the caretaker Prime Minister for the next two years. The military government has cracked down heavily on the protesters and activists. More than 900 people have been killed in police firing since February. The Association of Southeast Asian Nation is coordinating the global effort to bring peace and stability in Myanmar. A 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck Haiti on 14th August, dealing a devastating blow to the Caribbean island nation. The earthquake caused thousands of buildings to collapse and trapped people under rubble in at least two cities in the western part of the country. At least 304 people were killed and more than 1,800 injured, with many more people still missing. The disaster came at a time when Haiti is dealing with a political crisis after the assassination of its president, Jovenel Moise, on 7th July. The assassination, a leadership vacuum, severe poverty and systematic gang violence in parts of Haiti have left the government dysfunctional and ill-prepared for a natural calamity. The 7.2 magnitude earthquake was more powerful than the 7 magnitude earthquake that hit Haiti in 2010, which killed nearly 2 lakh people. The Biden administration, the United Nations and the private relief agencies are trying to help people in Haiti. Tropical storm Grace also hit Haiti just three days after the earthquake, making the relief work difficult. The Chinese parliament formally approved the Three Children policy on 20th August. In a major policy shift aimed to prevent a steep decline in the birth rates in the country, in May this year, the ruling Communist Party of China had approved a relaxation of its strict two-child policy to allow all couples to have up to three children. China permitted all couples to have two children in 2016, scrapping the decades-old one-child policy. The decision to permit the third child came after the census showed that China's population grew at the slowest pace. The revised population and family planning law provides social and economic incentives to the Chinese couples to have more children. According to the new law, the Chinese government will take supportive measures, including those in finances, taxes, insurance, education, housing and employment to reduce families' cost of raising and educating children. The next category is news from the field of business, economy and industrial sectors. In its third bi-monthly monetary policy review for the financial year 2021-22, Announced on 6th August, RBI kept the key policy rates unchanged for the seventh time in a row. The repo rate and the reverse repo rate were kept at the same rates of 4% and 3.35% respectively. RBI also retained the GDP growth projection for the current fiscal at 9.5%. However, given inflationary concerns, it increased the consumer price inflation forecast to 5.7% from the earlier 5.1%. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das underlined the need for closely monitoring the price hike situation in order to control the inflationary expectations in the economy. He also stressed on the need for continued monetary policy support for economic revival amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman announced a rupees 6 lakh crores national monetization pipeline on 23rd August. The pipeline has been developed by Niti Aayog in consultation with different ministries and government departments. The National Investment Pipeline estimates an aggregate monetization of rupees 6 lakh crores through assets of the central government over a four year period from financial year 2022 to 2025. The finance minister said that the asset monetization does not involve selling of assets. The national monetization pipeline will unlock value in infrastructure assets across various sectors. The top five sectors where the maximum asset monetization will take place are roads, railways, power, oil and gas pipelines and telecom sectors. The objective of this initiative is to enable infrastructure creation through public and private sector collaboration. 
Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman introduced an amendment to income tax laws in Lok Sabha on 6th August to nullify the controversial retrospective tax law. Retrospective tax was introduced by the UPA government in 2012. The purpose was to impose tax on capital gains made by companies. About rupees 1.1 lakh crore in retrospective taxes was sought from 17 companies on which taxes were imposed using the 2012 law. Of these, major recoveries were made only from Kane Energy. Central government will refund 7900 crore rupees collected from the UK based company. The move is expected to benefit companies like Kain Energy and Vodafone who are fighting arbitration cases against government of India in various international courts. The International Arbitration Tribunal in the Hague last year ruled that India's imposition of a tax liability on these two companies is not valid. The next category is conferences and reports. The first part of the much awaited 6th assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change was released on 9th August. The IPCC is an international body of scientists set up under the United Nations to generate scientific data to help countries in making climate related policies. The IPCC report presents depressing picture of climate change and global warming. The report notes that the world has already become 1.1 degree celsius warmer than pre-industrial level. This means more heat waves and longer warm seasons. This will have serious socio-economic consequences for humanity including an increased risk of new diseases, conflicts and crises. A key message for India is that the country should expect heat waves and continuation of Himalayan glaciers melting though massively heavy rainfalls will happen more towards the end of the century. According to the periodic labor force survey released by the National Statistical Office on 2nd August, the unemployment rate in India increased to 13.3% in July September 2020. The unemployment rate is defined as the percentage of unemployed persons in the labor force. The unemployment rate was 20.9% in April to June 2020. The survey gives an average picture of unemployment on a weekly basis. A person is considered unemployed if he or she is willing and available to work but could not get work for even 1 hour during the week. The next category is science and technology. The much awaited sea trials of India's first indigenous aircraft carrier INS Vikrant started on 5th August. It was a proud and historic day for Indian Navy. India has now joined a selected group of countries to have the capability to indigenously design and build an aircraft carrier. Built at the Cochin shipyard for around rupees 23000 crores, the IAC will become fully operational in mid 2023. The indigenous aircraft carrier is named INS Vikrant after the country's first aircraft carrier which was acquired from the UK in 1961 and eventually decommissioned in 1997. The launch of satellite ISRO's EOS-03 on the rocket GSLV F-10 was unsuccessful on 12th August. The failure is a major setback for ISRO which had been looking to regain momentum after time lost due to the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown. The satellite was meant to be the Indian Space Agency's first launch in 4 months. The cryogenic third stage of the rocket failed to ignite due to technical snags. India's Chandrayaan-2 moon orbiter confirmed the presence of water molecules on the surface of the moon. The discovery was made by Chandrayaan's Imaging Infrared Spectrometer. The Chandrayaan-2 mission was launched by ISRO in July 2019. Chandrayaan's lander crash landed on moon in September. However, the orbiter is still functional and providing useful information. The Chandrayaan-2 orbiter will serve for 7 years to study the surface of the moon. The Drug Controller General of India DCGI granted emergency use approval to Zydus Cadillac's vaccine Zycov-D on 20th August. Zycov-D is the first vaccine in India that can be administered to adults as well as those 12 and above. It is a 3 dose needle-free vaccine. 
the three doses of Zykov D are to be administered on day 0, day 28 and day 56 using a jet injector to inject the liquid through high pressure directly in the skin and the underlying tissues. It is also world's first ever DNA-based vaccine against the virus. DNA-based vaccines use engineered DNA to induce an immune response against the virus. Zykov-D is the sixth COVID vaccine to be approved in India after Bharat Biotech's co-vaccine, Oxford AstraZeneca's Covishield, Russia-made Sputnik V, Moderna vaccine and Johnson & Johnson's Jensen vaccine. The Johnson & Johnson's single-dose COVID-19 vaccine got emergency use approval in India on 7th August. The next category is sports. One of the most challenging games in the history, Tokyo Olympics, finally concluded successfully on 8th August. Tokyo 2020, as the name suggests, was originally scheduled to take place last year when no one had even the slightest idea about the pandemic. Tokyo 2020 was postponed by a year, becoming the first such instance in the history of the Olympic Games as previously the Games had been cancelled but not rescheduled. The Games also suffered the brutality of climatic conditions and emerged as one of the hottest Olympics Games ever. Four new sports, karate, skateboarding, sport climbing and surfing were introduced in Tokyo Olympics. USA topped the medal table with total 113 medals, including 39 golds. China finished second with 38 golds. India finished 48th on the medal tally in Tokyo Olympics. India won seven medals, including one gold, two silver and four bronzes. The 23-year-old Neeraj Chopra from Haryana won India's first ever athletic gold medal in javelin throw event. Mirabai Chanu of Manipur and Ravi Kumar Dahiya of Haryana won silver medals in 49 kg weightlifting and 57 kg wrestling categories respectively. The four bronze medals were won by Indian men's hockey team, PV Sindhu in badminton, Lavlina Borgohain in 69 kg boxing and Bajrang Punya in 65 kg wrestling categories. This is India's best performance in Olympics ever. The 17-year-old long jumper Shaili Singh won the silver medal in women's long jump at Under-20 World Athletics Championships in Nairobi on 21st August. Shaili Singh, who trains at the Anju Bobby George Academy in Bengaluru, is also the current junior national record holder. She missed the World Athletics gold medal by just one centimetre. However, Shaili's silver was also India's third medal at the championships in Nairobi. Earlier in the competition, Amit Khatri won silver in men's 10km race walk and Indian mixed 4x400 relay team won a bronze medal. In the end, let us look at some other miscellaneous news items. Thailand has banned sunscreens containing chemicals that damage coral from all of its marine national parks. The banned lotions are those containing oxybenzone, octinoxate, 4 methylbenzylidine camphor, or butyl paraben. These ingredients, commonly found in sun creams, obstruct coral reproduction and destroy coral larvae. Similar bans have earlier been introduced by the Pacific island of Palau and the US state of Hawaii. The four-day long naval exercise Malabar 2021 concluded on 29th August. In a strong message to China, the 25th edition of the Malabar exercise was conducted in the Philippines Sea. The US, India, Japan and Australia participated in the exercise. The aim of the exercise is to increase interoperability amongst the participating navies develop common understanding and SOPs for maritime security operations. With this, we have come to the end of this video. We hope you like the coverage of topics in our monthly GK Capsules. Do also watch our other videos. Happy learning! Thank you!